it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today we are going to be making a card using this Simon Says Stamp September monthly kit. Now this is the project video as I said and there is already a video reviewing the actual contents of the kit in more detail. If you want to see that just make sure you go on across to my blog post and you will find that video over on there to find the blog post all you need to do if you're on youtube is go to the paragraph below the video here and see it says show more click on that and you will see the link to the blog post okay so now let's get crafting now obviously the focus of our card is going to be this gorgeous stamp set however before we get to do the stamping we need to make our card base and cut some layers to stamp onto. I'm going to start off with the piece of white card that's included in the kit and I'm going to cut that into a layer that is going to be 4 inches by 8 inches in total because I'm going for a slightly unusual shaped card which is why I'm making the card base as well. I'm using my easy peasy card method and I am cutting the first layer here to four and a half by eight and a half using a heavy white cardstock and you could see there I added the map there just to see the border and I had a nice border around. Now for the second part of my card base because obviously you have a front and a back I'm cutting that to four and a half by nine inches and you can see how that back piece is slightly taller and then we're going to score at the half inch mark which will create a flap that we can join the back of the card to the front of the card and then the front and back will be the same size and if you're not totally familiar with the details of my easy peasy card method I will add that video to the blog post for you so you can see the original video and much more detail on how to do it and I'll also add the easy peasy envelope as well any size envelope so as you can see here I've got an extra layer I cut a Copic piece of card to the same size as the mat so we now have my card base the mat cut from the cardstock in the kit and a piece of Copic cardstock cut also to the same size at four by eight inches so we're going to be working on the Copic cardstock and we're going to do our stamping so I'm going to be using my Tim Holtz stamp platform and because I'm using Copic markers later to color these images I'm going to be using my Memento uh, tuxedo black to stamp them with so I'm just looking here at the moment and arranging the stamps onto my piece of card I sometimes find if you're not going to be overlapping them too badly that it works quite well to actually peel the stamps off and position them onto your cardstock to see if you can work out where you want things to be before you actually stamp now do remember that you need to flip them over so that the stamping side is down onto the card because otherwise you'll suddenly find that when you go to stamp everything is back to front so once I was happy with the position of all the pieces I took a quick snap with my camera so on my phone just so I could remember where things were and then I left the two mermaids behind because obviously they are the most important largest elements unfortunately as I pulled it up it did grab the card a little so I just double checked that it was in position before inking with my Duxedo black ink I really like this for colouring with Copics you know it's not going to move and it has a really crisp lovely line these stamps were really fine and really detailed actually and they really stamped up beautifully having stamped the mermaids I continue to just stamp the other elements as per my layout that I arranged before and just using my phone just to make sure I'm getting things where I had planned so I finished the bottom part here but as you can see a couple of spots round by the mermaid and then just here I'm using my fine liner just to add some little sand elements so that the plants look sat into the ground there I just felt that that would look better and also a bit round where the mermaid is I just made sure that all the pieces along there were connected and you'll see why I needed it to be one kind of line even if it was a little bit of a bumpy line but I needed one solid part along there and then I'm just finishing off with a few fish and a little uh, seahorse in the top there now actually you'll see later the positioning of these items 
doesn't actually matter around the top but it did help me to know that everything would fit and it'll all make sense what I'm saying in due course. Next on a separate piece of card that was a bit of the scrap of the white that was in the kit I stamped the sentiment and then I'm going to cut that out using the labels 18 spell binders and I thought for a change I'd use my little baby blue machine by Tattered Lace. So you're going to use your B plate then your card then your die cut side down and then I'm going to actually stick my die in place using some tape because there's no magnetic platform or anything and then to finish the sandwich I'm going to put my A plate on top and then just run it through the machine and voila you have a gorgeous sentiment tag and I think that's a great sentiment as well so next I am using this gorgeous paper that was included in the kit it's it's like C it really is it's perfect for this kit and I'm literally just taking my card here and I'm going to be sticking that onto the front so you could measure it out and stick it down you know cut it and then stick it down but I think the easiest way is to down and just stick it in place and then just take your scissors and cut away the excess on all four sides and there it is finished it looks gorgeous and it's much simpler to do it that way but that paper is stunning so next we're taking some of the glitter paper that was included in the kit and i've got this simon says stamp make a scene mask set and then i'm going to use the hills that are in there to draw a template onto the back of the sparkly blue card stock there and then i'm literally just going to cut that out with a pair of scissors to create these little hills i'm not quite sure how much that's going to show when i finish but it might show enough just to create a little bit of fun and so then all i'm going to do is glue that down and cut the excess off the two edges so while I had that sparkly paper out I thought it would look really nice with our sentiments so I cut another one of these spellbinder shapes I cut it the same size and then I cut it in half and then I glued each half to each side of my sentiment and I think it looks really effective so continuing working on the inside of the card I'm taking the piece of cardstock we cut from the white cardstock that was in the kit and I'm taking the two distress oxides that were in the kit and I'm grabbing a couple of the um, what creative expressions called smoothies there's our white I've got some different colored ones from elsewhere I just tend to call them eggs um, so I'm using my sponge eggs and I'm literally going to just um, create a background uh, blend onto the whole of this cardstock using the ink so you'll notice that I have added a um, brown sort of mat down it's one of these heat resistant mats but it also has the benefit that obviously you can put all sort of inks and all sorts on it and it doesn't get stained or marked at all but also it has that slippy surface and that's what you really need here you need to be able to start off your mat card and work your way onto it um, so you want that slippy surface if you go straight onto your cardstock you will end up with kind of quite a dark blobby part you you don't want to do that now you'll see I did a little bit at the bottom there and now I'm starting with the other color at the top and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around all the edges but I'm going to make my way gradually over into the center of the card um, I want the sort of top and and the edges slightly darker but I'm going to gradually make my way so that the two colors will meet into the middle and we will blend those out now what you might also notice is that it looks kind of patchy that was actually deliberate I was kind of going for this sort of sky underwater some sort of movement to the actual background there so the next thing I want to do is just add that kind of watery effect so I'm actually going to take literally some water I'm going to spray it into my hands and then sort of throw those dots of water down onto the cardstock so that it creates uh, little splatters and what will happen is you give that a few minutes the ink will react with the water and then you take your uh, tissue and you place it over the top and that will lift some of that ink away now that's it done I did a couple more times but it's hard to see 
any of this on camera here you'll probably find it's more visible on the photographs so do make sure you go on across to the blog to take a look at those so the last thing I did on this piece was use a wave stencil the Simsa stamp uh, ink pad for embossing that was in the kit and the embossing powder also that was in the kit just to add some extra fun and dimension to this element and finally I'm just gluing that down using a bit of my cosmic shimmer glue I know this probably seems quite a lot of work for an element on the inside but I really think it brings the two pieces together really nicely the front and the back um, or the front of the inside to really bring the colors and the theme inside as well and I always think it's really nice to do something nice on the inside as well it doesn't have to be massively elaborate I mean I think this probably was in technique terms but possibly not in look but uh, I think it's fun and then finally all I'm going to do is stick down the sentiment tag that we created so now we've finished on the inside we're going to start coloring the mermaids etc that are going to be our featured pieces on the front i will stop chatting for this part and put some music on for you and just to add i'm not going to be able to show you all the colors as we're working on this but what i have done is put a photograph of the exact colors used on the blog post so again it is worth going across to there to see that because as i said before you'll get both videos you get a load of photos you get the links to all the products but you also will get um, shown exactly what colours are used in this drawing. Okay, so now let's get colouring.
at a pale pink sky It's telling me I'm gonna be alright I'm gonna be alright Say hello to my Mr. Moon Like nature I will be renewed I will be renewed I feel
Her head was down, face locked onto the phone And I wished I'd had a number so I could be color unknown And then I tell her to look into my eyes and never let it go
I can't replace who you are You are The way you smile, the way you laugh, the way I Can't help but catch your Okay, 
so there it is all coloured in and now I'm going to chop it all up so I'm just separating out the main elements just to make it easier but I'm actually going to cut this with my craft knife because it's quite detailed and I think it really needs um, that kind of uh, precision what you need to do I think with a craft knife is to make sure that it's really really sharp make sure that your mat isn't too kind of dented because you'll find that that will affect the smoothness of your blade running through and depending on the thickness of your card you might find that you have it's easier to do a couple of times over the same area than trying to force it through in one go my card was just about the right thickness and i managed with my very sharp blade to get it done in one go so here you can see i have cut all the pieces out including the little fish but you can see around the edges that where you've cut it it's very white and I didn't really like that so I'm using the memento black pen here and I'm using the brush nib and I'm literally just brushing over that cut edge I'm not going over the front at least that's the plan um, and I chose to do that instead of a copic because I actually heard from someone else that does this all the time that this was their advice because they said that the copic markers and and I tested it and I did find the same was that the copic markers absorb into your card a lot more so if you're not careful you'll find they go and show where you've colored rather than just the edges of it so I've gone through all around all the edges now with the black marker and you can see how good that looks it looks a lot better not having that uh, white edge and you can also see now what my plan was with regard to the background and you can see that it's just so effective at least I think it's so effective having that paper as our C and just putting our elements straight onto there so I'm going to use my pin flare gel glue to stick this down and what you find is that you can therefore give it just a little bit of shape if you try and do this with foam I think that you're going to really struggle with um, like the finer elements as well but what I do really like about the pin flare is that you can have different heights within the same element so you can get just that little bit of extra dimension and you can see here I'm putting quite a bit on and I'm putting a little bit on the finer elements even you can just swipe it down very carefully I'm not trying to get massive height on those finer elements this is what I'm saying some of those could almost sit at the tops of them almost sit flat and that just gives that different dimension and I think that's so effective and then I'm just very carefully picking that up with my tweezers because it's it's quite heavy actually it kind of flops the gel gives it some um, weight while it's wet it, it will dry quite lightly but it sort of feels more heavy when it's wet and then I'm not really pressing it down very much just enough for the gel to adhere to the back but I don't want to do too much I don't want to squish out that dimension I created now this particular mermaid you're going to really see how the glue gel is giving that dimension that difference that I was talking about because I really um, took advantage of it here so you can see I'm adding quite a bit in those particular areas and then on her tail as well and then less so on the bits in between and as you can see I even went back to the areas where I wanted that bit of extra height and added a little bit more glue gel so that I could really get that dimension showing and as before just using my tweezers to pop her down and then just where the areas that I wanted lower I'm just giving a little bit of extra push you need to do that just to encourage the curve you've created because obviously you've got less glue gel there and as you put it down it kind of flattens a bit but as you've got the curve in it so just give it the press in the areas that you curved and it will create back into that curve shape and the glue gel would adhere in the right places and will hold it for you and then finally with the gluing I'm just sticking down these little elements here but even with these because of the glue gel I'm able to create that dimension and give them a little curve and it will hold them down beautifully firm so the next thing that I decided to do was make use of the lovely gold sequins that were in the kit and I've just put some on the sort of jewels and pearls down the bottom by the chest there because I think that just adds that 
extra kind of luxury treasure trove there and again I'm just using my glue gel and just putting a tiny bob down and then putting the sequin on top and I will do the same for the others that I've put up into the sea. So now the sequins are all stuck down. My final touch is just to add a little shimmer to my mermaids with the stickles here. I've got this lovely mint green stickles. I can't quite remember what it's called. And um, I'm just adding that to her actual uh, tail and the shells on her bikini top and in her hair and I think I didn't go too heavy with it I didn't want to cover up the coloring and the shading that I did so I did quite lightly and then I took this pale blue stickles again you want to be a little bit careful when you're um, on these until the glue gel's dried you don't want to push down so much that you squelch the glue gel out but then um, using this lovely blue I just went over the top of the other mermaid's tail and her bikini top and the shells in her hair and that is it complete I don't want to do any more to it I am actually really pleased with how it turned out I wasn't really sure halfway through I was getting really insecure about the route I'd chosen to go down so I'm actually really really pleased with how it turned out um, I think that I liked how I did the inside as well you could of course if you didn't want to do all that uh, inking you could just use a colored piece of paper and uh, add your sentiment like that and that would be just as good I'm sure but I just wanted to make use of the elements that were in the kit and I think it turned out really well in fact I think it turned out much better than I was expecting because halfway through I kind of stopped and was like oh I don't know so yeah I'm definitely really really pleased with it and I hope you like it too now as I said a couple of times throughout the video with regards to different parts of, and elements that we were talking about at the time it is definitely worth going over to the blog post there'll be the um, videos on there for the two pro this project and the review video I'll also put on there the easy peasy cards video and photographs and many more things that we talked about so it is definitely worth taking a peek over there all you need to do is go to the paragraph below this video you will see a note that says show more that opens the paragraph up when you open that up you'll see loads of writing and in amongst that pretty near the top is a link to that blog post and it will take you straight there and just as a side note if you happen to subscribe to my website while you were there what you would get is an email straight to your inbox which would give you a notification every time I did a video post and you can literally click the link and it takes you straight there every time you don't even have to hunt for it okay so thank you so much for watching i hope you have enjoyed and again apologies for the delay in these videos but i hope you think it was worth the wait thanks again and i will see you again soon bye for now bye